On today's show, we get an update on Kawhi Leonard's status for game one. How much does his health swing this series? We'll talk about all that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to Mavericks. NBA champions. He is back. He is back. It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. Thank you, If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Lockdown Maps your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, like the video on YouTube, leave a five-star review, and comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section what's one way the Mavericks could lose this series to the Clippers. We'll get into that a little bit later. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And joining me with hair this time. What you got for me slightly? What you got for me slightly biased? I'm just counting down the days, man. This is excruciating. Oh, no, I love it. I, 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 you feel the tension. It's like. It's like a bizarro Christmas, you know? It's like, <laughs> no, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to check up. Let's play. Let's go. I'm talking like throw, I'm out there. Throw the ball up. Uh, I'm in the corner. Yeah. Pass me the ball. I got my flights. I'm ready to go to LA. I'm Are you excited. going? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Nice, dude. I'm oh, yeah. jealous. Um, unless, unless, they, unless they don't let me go. Ooh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna say, "Hey, uh, no Mavericks people allowed when you land at the airport." Unless I say something ridiculous on today's show, which is <laughs> it's definitely possible. No, we're gassing up the Clippers on today's show. We've been answering the biggest questions. So on Monday, Reggie and I asked the biggest questions. The other day, slightly and I have been answering the Mavs questions. Today, we're gonna answer a bunch of the Clippers questions. So we'll talk about Kawhi Leonard's status. We'll uh, we'll talk about the ways Mavericks could lose because I felt like we spent the whole first time talking about how confident we were in the first one. So I was like, all right, let's maybe tone it down a little bit and see where there could be issues. We'll talk about uh, how the Clippers may attempt to guard Luka, how did James Harden change everything, talk about all that stuff. But let's start here slightly. We got an update from Sham Sharania of The Athletic in the only way that he can. He sent us to, sent us to a live stream where, where wherein I watched uh, all four two minutes that I had to watch of the, of the live stream and then got the update and then <laughs> listened to Pat Garrity talk about how much Kawhi Leonard means to the series. And then uh, the report was this. There's cautious optimism that Kawhi Leonard will be ready for game one. He has received an injection in the knee. He's been ramping up. He's been doing on-court workouts. We did hear that he has been participating in practice, but not fully in practice necessarily. So getting an injection in the knee, that to me, that that signals that, hey man, like this, this knee thing is really really real he's been out since the beginning of april with this knee inflammation it's the same knee that he's been out with for the last couple of playoffs like this is Kawhi leonard's last four years in the playoffs 2024 right now he's dealing with this right knee inflammation uh, he should play but we'll see 2023 he only played in two games because he had a right knee sprain same knee 2022 uh he didn't play in the playoffs because he had an acl injury 2021 he played 11 games and then had a sprained right knee and then 2020 he played the entire 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 playoffs he hasn't played the entire playoffs since 2020 i mean it's been a yeah. while and it's been that right knee twice now three times that he's been dealing with it well my my question is when did he get the injection because that it from what i understand shams was not like super specific with that so that could have been yeah. oh he got the injection you know a few weeks ago and now he's ramping up ready to go or if it's oh he got the injection yesterday well that changes things i think kind of dramatically because I don't know that. I mean, I've operated under the assumption that Kawhi is going to play in the series. I, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't really considered the idea that he doesn't play at all. But um, if you're telling me that he's not maybe a hundred percent, I could believe that, and that obviously changes things dramatically. Yeah, if he's not a hundred percent, which I think that he's not. I think that we can yeah. go into the series thinking that he's going to play, but also thinking he's not a hundred percent. To give context for the injection, I'm not Brian Suter. I'm not like I'm not like a sports medical doctor or anything like that, but. <laughs> to give context to it, do you remember the 2022 Euro basket where Slovenia was playing Poland? They were going to get eliminated. Luka was not doing good, and he got an ejection in his leg in the third quarter of that series. And you could tell how bad he was doing, like or in the third quarter of that game. Uh, that's that's the level that we're at right now with with Kawhi Leonard, and that's the level you have to hit to get this kind of like injection, I guess. 
And so I think that let's talk. So we, we can all speculate about how healthy he'll be and all that. But let's talk about the way he's, he matters for the Clippers because he matters a whole lot to this Clippers team. When he's on the court, they have, this is just straight on off numbers. When he's on the court, they're a positive 8.2 net rating in over 4,600 possessions. It's a lot. When he's been off the court this season, they're negative two <laughs> net rating Whoa. in about 3,000 possessions. Now, if you take Kawhi off and put Paul George and James Harden on the court, they're a plus eight again. So you've you got to put it into context that they're not going to play these non-star type lineups that they may have played in the regular season. But it, it is a big swing, and the defense still completely falls off when Kawhi Leonard's on the court because they've started to lose some of these, these defenders that they've had for years. Zubats is a big part of their defense. Darian talked about that in the crossover that we did. We did two episodes. If you missed those, go check out those in the feed, wherever you're watching, listening to this. But Kawhi matters to their defense a lot. Yeah, I know. And, and the whole idea, I think, even national media people and stuff I've heard talking about the series is fourth quarter, when it's when it's crunch time, Kawhi is going to be guarding Luka. Like, that's what that's the tactic they're going to deploy. And look, Luka, I mean, Kawhi did a pretty good job against Luka in that series a few years ago whenever he guarded yeah. him. So if, Ka- if Kawhi is not at 100%, and I, I looked it up because – I was thinking injection of knee. I'm pretty sure Donovan Mitchell just got one of those. Now I don't know if there's different types of injections. So I, I don't know the if they're different, but Donovan Mitchell missed some time and came back, but it wasn't until like his last game where it felt like Donovan Mitchell was back, you know, mm-hmm. and like really playing at the level that he can be expected to. And the Clippers are gonna need Kawhi Leonard to look at this point in the season, nobody's hundred percent. So I kind of regret even saying Kawhi's not gonna be hundred percent because I'm sure the people are gonna be like, Well, no one's hundred percent. True, but you get what I'm saying. Like there's a difference between getting oh, an I, injection, hundred percent, not hundred percent. Right, yes. There's a difference between I had to have stuff shoot it into my knee versus <laughs> my ankle kind of hurts. Did you say like shoot it? A, yeah, <laughs> shot stuff, stuff shoot it into my knee. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call us locked on grammar. Okay, we didn't go to school for That's school. Right. That's right. I did not go to school for school. That is definitely for sure. But <laughs> the Kawhi Leonard means a lot. We've been talking a lot about the okay. Well, if they play off Zubats, what's the small ball lineup look? You know who's been the five in their small ball units? <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard has been the five. And he's done well because he's Kawhi Leonard. And he can be an incredible defense in and of himself. But if he's the if he's the five in their small ball units and he has to play the five and the Mavericks can keep Gafford out there and keep Lively out there or even keep Maxi out there who can be physical, that's going to be tough work for him. It's, yeah, especially if he's not – there's some knee pain there like – that's a lot to ask is a guy like Kawhi to not only do all the things he does offensively, and the, the burden on him is lower now with James Harden and stuff, but it still is. to do what he does offensively and be the five defensively against the team that's going to set screens, they're going to put people in action. Like it's not just going to be, and that's one thing I'm interested in is Sunday, game one. I'm assuming Kawhi is playing. Do they immediately say, Let, let's see, let's see what that knee's looking like? Like let's, let's see Test how him. you're moving. Yeah, let's see. Because I, I thought that's what the uh, six or the Heat did against the Sixers last night was all right, Embiid. Let's see, yeah, let's see how that knee is feeling, really. And the Heat won that game until the chicken event happened. But um, <laughs> we talked I'm about that on Locked how... NBA the other day, <laughs> the, the, how the chicken turned <laughs> turned the game. <laughs> the power of, of Chick Fil A, man. It really it, it does have a stranglehold on you. Okay, wait. Since we're talking about this, uh, I looked this up for Locked On NBA last night. We did it on uncounted up at the end. So they've been doing this chicken thing. They give out a five count nugget if if a player misses two free throws. They give out an eight count if misses no, another player misses, and a twelve count if another player misses two two or more. They have a counter for how many nuggets they've they've given out this season. Okay. Would you like to guess how many nuggets they've given out? Every game. Yeah. Well, they've they've done it every game, but they haven't they haven't won it every game. I'm gonna guess twenty two thousand nuggets. That sounds way off. That's like one game. Seven hundred and eighty. Oh. <laughs> well, I was kind of close. <laughs> you were only 760 off. Well, 760,000 off. Insane. But uh, but yeah, with with Kawhi Leonard, he matters a lot. And so his status is is huge for this for this team. He matters a lot because of what he brings on the defensive end. The offensive end, I think they can they can overcome. I think that that's I think that that's not the area that I'm worried about. For the clip for the Clippers side of things, because with Kawhi off the floor and Paul George and James Harden on, they have 125 offensive rating. Like they can yeah. they can overcome the offense. They can get it in other ways. They can get offense. The problem is the defense for Kawhi. And mm-hmm. I think that's where they need his health even more because offensively, 
He just needs to get to his spot, pull up in that little mid-range. <laughs> he's he's yeah. just fine. Like, he just does that over and over again. But they need him to be quick laterally, defensively, and stay in front of guys and stay in front of Luka. And if he's going to guard Luka, Luka can be physical with him and all that. And so I think this matters a lot. This is a big storyline. I'm fascinated to see what his status is. I still think it's Mavs in six. But honestly, if you told me Kawhi really struggled, I would go Mavs in five, like, very, very easily. Uh, and that's yeah. and that's where we, where we are with this. But coming up, let's ask some more questions about the Clippers. Let's talk about how guarding Kawhi Leonard could be different this year. Let's talk about some of the other changes the Clippers have made, and then we'll get into why the Mavs could lose this series. We'll talk about that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. Let's get straight to the point. If you want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation to pay off your debt, your mortgage, everybody feels like got debt somewhere. Pretty much anything standing in the way of your financial freedom. With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. Oh man, that just sounds great, financial freedom. So whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need all in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at financial news cycle, including breaking news, online editorial perspectives, analysis rankings, and ratings, independent research, customizable charts, stuff like that. You can get it all at Yahoo Finance. For a comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. Again, just go to yahoofinance.com, yahoofinance.com. Also brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of props and odds that you can use to get in on the action. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. You can bet on the... Uh, you can bet on all kinds of NBA stuff. They also have NFL for the offseason and the draft and all things like that. Right now, Mavs Clippers. Mavs minus 118. Clippers were plus 100. Now they're minus 104. So it looks like they're maybe feeling a little bit better. This was updated on Sunday. This was even, this was this is not without, with the Kawhi Leonard update, I guess. And so uh, we'll see if that changes at all, but you can go get in on that. If you want to bet on the Mavs winning that series, they have the Suns minus 140 and the Timberwolves plus 114. Really don't believe in the Timberwolves. So go check out FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. My first shot, my first play. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On Mavs, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out with us, checking out the show. So many shows. If you missed any of them, I did two episodes with Darian Vaziri from Locked On Clippers, breaking down this series. Slightly and I have now done two episodes breaking down this series. Reggie and I did an episode at the beginning of this. Of this. Isaac and I did an episode at the beginning of this week, too, breaking down this series. And then tomorrow, I should be on with Law Murray. Uh, clip who covers the Clippers, and so we should be talking about all kinds of Clipper stuff with him as well. Just keep following Locked On Mavs wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. And uh, some days, sli- bro. Some days slightly has hair, and some days slightly doesn't have hair. Uh, See, I can't do like Nick. Nick can just go every day and be fine. I'm just so stressed out. One day it's God knows what. Uh, my uh, I I went <laughs> I went and got a haircut today. Shout out to shout out to my guy Eric who listens to the show, and he goes. Hey, it's Thursday. Did slightly get to play softball. <laughs> we'll see. It's, it is cloudy it's, outside today. I've been following Pete Delkis's updates on Twitter very closely, and we it, it's questionable. It's questionable. Good old, good old Pete Delkis, WFAA, <laughs> which we are which we are a part of technically. I go on WFAA Pistol all, Pete. all the time, and I should be doing some post games for WFAA uh, for through the playoffs too. I just got that message today that I should be on there. So. Nice. All right, slightly. We're talking about the we're talking about the Clippers. We're talking about Kawhi Leonard and his update on his injury. How will guarding Kawhi Leonard be different this season? Because if you look at the past years, Kawhi kind of did whatever he wanted. He was getting guarded by Maxi, by Seth Curry, by Josh Richardson, by Tim Hardaway Jr. How will having PJ and Derek Jones Jr. be different this season, especially with Kawhi being hobbled with his injury? It'll make life a little bit more difficult for Kawhi, I think, just in terms of the ease at which he can get to his spots. But at the end of the day he's one of those players where yeah. it's just because you, you watch some of the shots and just go on, you know, the NBA possession tracker things for videos and just watch the shots he's made this season. It's like, sometimes it's, there's not a thing you can do defensively that's different against what he just pulled up against. But I, I do kind of find it interesting. The Mavs over the stretch where they've been so good defensively. I mean, they've been just in terms of uh, opponent shooting accuracy. They've been one of the best at the rim, the best actually in the whole league. And they've also been one of the best, in mid-range jumpers. Now, I, I don't know mm. how much of that has to do with shooting luck maybe factored in a little bit there. I feel like with long mid-range numbers, a lot of that has to be shooting luck. But 
or I, I think a lot of it though has to do with the length, making those type of shots a little bit more difficult and making it a little bit more difficult to get to those spots on the floor. So you just have to do your best. I mean, you have to limit him getting to that spot in, in the paint where he can just rise up over anybody. Yeah. Cause that's, that's where he kills you. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm fascinated to see how, how that goes and to see how, that helps the Mavericks that just to have just to have two better defenders than they did last time. They just had yeah. Dorian last time that these these two teams played in the playoffs. It was a very different looking team and a very different looking like like functioning defense. It was Rick Carlisle's defense compared to Jason Kidd's defense. And so I'm interested in that too. And the Mavs strength has been defense. And so if the Mavs get beat really badly on that end of the floor, can they put together enough offense? And and that to me is a way talk about a little bit the way a way the Mavericks could lose if it's a foot race if it's just like yeah. you know a foot race as far as who can who can get to 120 I don't know if this, this team is is there like like they used to be uh to start the season the way that they've been constructed and, and all that the way that guys have been shooting and things like that but guarding Kawhi Leonard I think will be better and I think that at least closes some of the margin from that where Kawhi just got anything he wanted like they just didn't have any answer for him at all and the Clippers had a bunch of answers for Luka last time they played and now they don't have as many especially with Kawhi with his injury. And so I'm interested in that. Yeah. Um, and oh, go ahead. I was going to change the subject. Yeah, go for it. I wasn't going to add anything insightful. <laughs> the, was the weather update? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it was just basically going to be agree with you. You can, oh, you can agree with me. That's fine. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> James Harden, I think changes them a lot. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what playoff James Harden we're getting. And I don't think anybody does, but I think it's important to remember that I see some people just like writing off James Harden. Oh, he's one of the biggest playoff like chokers we've ever seen, blah, blah, blah. James Harden can still put up really good numbers in the, in the playoffs and has, uh, last year he had two 40 point games in the playoffs that won the Sixers games. Like that was huge for them. He still has put up you know, massive numbers in playoff games. And he hasn't lost the playoff series. Darian said this in our crossover. He hasn't lost the first round playoff series since like 2016. I mean, yeah. it, like he can still put up big numbers. Now, sometimes like last year with the Sixers, he put up 45 in game one. They won that one, put up 42 in game four, but then put up nine in game seven. And you're like, okay, that's where, that's where it, it all falls apart for James Harden. But I wouldn't write him off. Like he's just, oh, he's just not going to bring anything. He'll just shut down. And the biggest difference is he's the third option now as opposed to yeah. first option or second option. So, yeah, I, I, you're going to get a, a few good James Harden games. And for him, it's more so how he can set up Paul George and Kawhi and run that pick and roll with Zubats and how their offense can flow through that and gets good looks for everybody else on the floor. And if it if it does turn into a James Harden hero ball ISO thing, I think I think you feel good about that. Like that's, yeah. I, I live with that. James Harden's still been really efficient as an isolation scorer, but if it's more ISO heavy, I mean, nobody isolates in the NBA more than the Los Angeles Clippers. That's because they have three really good ISO players. But uh, I, I think you're okay with that. And I, I'm assuming, I'm really interested to see who the Mavs are going to have guarding them. That's the, that's one of the big questions is who, who starts on him. If you had to, if you had to pick, we're answering the questions. So who do you start, who do you start on whom? I know that defense is, changing and everybody switches and all that but like who are you starting like what's the what's the initial starting spot for for the defense Kyrie I think you start Kyrie on Harden but th there is a world where maybe you put Luca on like a Paul George or something with the idea maybe being how often is Paul George involved in their actual actions rather than it's one-on-one -on -one Paul George because I, I watching Clippers like they'll they'll have Paul George set screens and stuff like yeah. they'll, they'll mix up looks so the idea with Luca is you want to get him to a spot where he's not getting put in every single action. And I've seen people say, Luca should guard Harden. No, no, no. That should not happen, <laughs> I don't think. Because he's going to be involved in every single action defensively. And you, you, don't, you just don't want to tire out your, your superstar like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you start, I think you start Derek Jones Jr. On, on James Harden. You start, start the ball handler on him and then start yeah. PJ on Kawhi and then – then you have to make a choice on Paul George, which is just really tough. Ugh. I think I really do think you have to look at it and be like, all right, like how what is Paul what actions are Paul George going to be is Paul George going to be involved in? And that that decides whether or not we're comfortable with Luca being on that. And Kyrie being on Terrence Mann. But it, it should well, be Luca's gonna be on Terrence Mann. We know this. Like, like I, yeah. I don't, 
that's that's just the way it's always gone forever <laughs> with these two teams. Derek Jones uh, Jr., now you say that, is definitely going to pick up Harden. He just, I think he's that's just, the right he's, choice. He's just been very good at the point of attack, guard the pick and roll, like recover. like Screen navigation. And But then it puts you in a tough place with Paul George. And maybe you just – Paul George has been really good this season too. Maybe you just bet on him beating you instead of, instead of Kawhi. Or maybe they look at Kawhi and say he's not healthy enough and we'll put Kyrie on him to just like – Oh, that's that's <laughs> tested it. You put PJ on Kawhi because then you say, you know what? Not only are you gonna have to work with that knee, but you're gonna have to work against our best defender too. Yeah, you just, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. You'll make him. You'll make him work early and early and often. The same way they're gonna try to make Luca work. I mean, yeah, it's the same side of it. Coming up, ways the Dallas Mavericks could lose. What are what are our biggest concerns? We're both pretty confident in this series, but what happens if we're completely wrong? What hap- <laughs> what, what what will happen? We'll talk about that. We will not hear the end of it. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. If you have a job right now that you're trying to figure out, man, I got to figure out somebody to get this job that is the perfect fit. I'm a small business owner. I've got so many different hats that I wear. I don't really know how to uh, work this into my schedule. Well, LinkedIn is constantly helping me find ways to make this process easier. They even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process easier and quicker. Two and two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So check it out. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. That's quick right there. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Shut it down. All right, Slightly. We've been pretty confident. You're sticking with Mavs in five? Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm Mavs in six. And let's say we're completely wrong. All these things we've been confident in. What's one area or one thing that could happen where you're like, oh, man, this is what we were. We were, we were wrong on this, and so the Mavericks lost. You mentioned it earlier, and that's that uh, the Clippers' offense is just too much to handle for the Mavericks. And... The, the idea recently since the trades was like, oh, well, the Mavericks can get in these dog fights and pull out wins in the end, which they isn't have. enough anymore. Yeah, which they have. And it's like, okay, well, they kind of need to go back to where they were in the past, which is we need to get in track meets to win these games 140 <laughs> to 137. Like that that's number one. That's the biggest way I can see this going sideways for the Mavericks. Yeah, because you go back to – well, you, you go back to – when their defense was really struggling, the Pacers, yeah. the, you know, even the Sixers, the Cavs, like those games where they just had that lull and those teams just whip the ball around. And mm-hmm. if you get some ball movement, the problem is the Clippers don't really do that. And so I think this Mavericks right. team defensively, like I do feel pretty confident about it, but it doesn't matter. This Clippers team can get what shots that they want. And they have a bunch of options on, they have every option on offense. As long as all, all three of those main guys are in uh, the only thing they don't do is push the pace really. And that's fine. <laughs> that's that's positive for the Mavericks too. We've talked about pace a lot yeah. this week, but yeah, if they get in some kind of a, a offensive track meet where the Clippers are just dealing and hitting shots, hitting shots, hitting shots, making Luca and Kyrie work, making them work, then there's so much on Luca and Kyrie's plate on offense to try and set up everything that maybe they don't have enough in the end, and then the Clippers, their their like top end depth ends up winning uh, winning out. That that to me could be a, a real bad recipe for uh, for the Mavericks. So I, I agree that you look at their the defensive struggles that they had and the teams that they played like Indiana, though, that poses a problem for the Mavericks with ball movement. They just, you're probably not going to get with this Clippers team. But do we not think that like two weeks straight, I'm looking at these games right now and it's like teams that are just not very good offensively that just destroyed the Mavericks. Like at, at some point, do you just write that two week stretch off? It's, it's like something must've been going on. The team was just not locked in. Bunch of new guys that, or trying to figure out the defense, and it, it looked really good at first, but it was destined to hit a rough patch. Yeah, it's well, it's it's just the only examples we have of like yeah, this new Mavericks team being bad defensively. So like you have to go back to it as your reference point for okay, this new version of this Mavericks with Gafford and PJ and all that. That's the only <laughs> reference points that I have basically for that. I know because the only other games they lost other than that were against Oklahoma when Luca didn't play. And then uh, the Warriors, where the Warriors only scored 104 points. And then the last two games, they don't really even count <laughs> because right. they, no, nobody really played. And so yes. there's just not really any examples of the Mavericks defense really cratering in a way. Uh, the Rockets game, I guess they allowed 136 points and it was an overtime game. So maybe that, but 
some insane shot making in that game to be fair for sure which, which the clippers could, here. Clippers yeah. could absolutely do that's another thing is that the clippers just get all the shots that they want the mavericks defense can contest and they can do all that they want but the clippers can still get their shots and if yeah. they, the clippers can still get their shots then offensively mavs might not be able to keep up with them yeah and look in a seven game series there is a, a possibility that Kawhi just goes nuclear again and paul george plays great and harden plays great and norman powell's doing incredible stuff off the bench yeah. And, and in that time, it's just like, wow, we just don't have the offense besides Kyrie and Luka to really keep us in these games. Like, that's that's number one. And then number two, it just kind of ties into that. Like, if your, your role players have – and I'm not saying, like, bad shooting. I mean, like, disastrous. Like, in the 20s from three magnets. type of shooting performances. Yeah, the real, magnets real are not – bad magnets game. Brutally bad magnets games. Like, if you get that – but even if you get that and your defense is playing fine, you can win those games, though. <laughs> So positive. <laughs> Ending. Well, I, the, it really goes back to that the Mavs defensively get torched. That's just kind of it. Yeah. It, well, it, well, if the Mavs defense is not as real as we think, because it's only been, it's yeah. only been two months, right? True. And we have seen ex- some examples of them cratering, which we just talked about and, and broke through. So it, it, it's not like this is a tried and true, man, all season, this Mavs team has been top 10 defensively and all that. Even the Mavs of 2022, when that defense really proved, it was January to the end of the season. That they yeah. were really, really good. And um, they made the trade for Porzingis, and that that really changed it. But they were good defensively even before that, whereas this Mavs team really picked it up once the trades happened. And so we, and haven't, had, had, we haven't had proof of concept for that long on this new Mavs roster. Even that 2022 team had moments in the playoffs where their defense looked not good at all. Like, well, I, the, I remember they were down 2-0 to the Suns. It's like, oh, my God, what – this is the worst defense I've ever seen. Game two was, like, the most embarrassing game of Luka's career up until that point. Yeah. I mean, he, he was just getting – torn apart defensively over and over and over again and every game in that sun series was a blowout that's that's why game seven was so insane because it was like blowout blow yeah. blowout the most insane blowout ever <laughs> in game seven what a weird series is there a scenario where gafford and lively can't play we've been talking about zubats getting played off the floor is there a way that where we just go oh my god neither of these guys can play all of a sudden the mavs have to do either small with pj or small with maxi and pj and they're like can PJ sit ever if one of those guys, if those two centers can't play? I don't think it'd be anything like, oh, Gafford and Lively are playing terribly. It would be more so what we talked about earlier, which is, uh, oh, like we're going to get, this is going to be a track meet and we're going to have to match it and we want floor spacing. Like that, that would be it. Yeah, I think it would be, yeah, I think it would be about defense and switching. These guys can't keep up with the, with the defensive switches that they need to, to make. You, to see, keep- I don't, I don't think that. You don't think that, that 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 could happen? If they get played off the floor entirely, I think it would be because they want spacing. Like it, it, it's got to the point where they're just like, just because this the is... offense couldn't get anything going. Yeah, I, I just struggle to imagine Gafford and Lively like struggling that badly, it, especially if Zubats is on the floor. That's what I'm saying. I, what if they go small and the Mavs try to say okay. big? The Mavs try to say big, so then all of a sudden you have to switch everything, and then like all of a sudden Terrence Mann is just blowing by Lively or yeah. Gafford. Or Paul George that, is doing the same. That would be disheartening. <laughs> I I guess that's, it, why, that's why we're talking about this. <laughs> true, true. I mean, I, I guess it could happen. And then in that case, yeah, you raise an interesting point where it's like, so PJ Washington's going to get 46 minutes yeah. a game? Like how? Just can't how sit that, him. I've seen, it's funny because after Omax had good, two good games against, <laughs> everyone's yeah. like, what do, like, is Omax in the playoff rotation? It's like, dude, come on guys, please. <laughs> the Pistons second string guys are in third string even. And then. The uh the Thunder where they got destroyed and the Thunder weren't really playing that hard in the second half. But but if PJ's got to play forty five minutes, who gets to the other three? This is why we've been looking for another player like this for a long time this season. I think the the other thing that could happen we talked about this, but the Mavs shaky shooting if it just doesn't if guys just yeah. don't hit. I mean Exum, you're talking about Exum, Derek Jones Jr., PJ Washington, Maxi. Those four mm-hmm. specifically. If those four four specifically shoot like fifteen percent from three for yeah. the series, like. Could be really hard because then you're going to have to match their offense. Clippers right. will get their offense. Agreed. No, yeah, it's uh, let's not forget in 2022 when they made that run, Maxi shot incredibly well, especially in that Utah series. So, and, and it was very important for the team. So they're they're going to need their role guys to have big shooting games. And if they get that, like if they get good shooting nights from Tim and Maxi and PJ, and I just mean like above league average to where like. Yeah. If they're left open, it's it's probably going in. Just hit two, man. I, <laughs> you know, yeah. I really struggle. I just really struggle to see 
how the Clippers match everything the Mavs can throw at them. Right. No, I, I agree with that. If, if they're hitting that 2022 yeah. season, by the way, they were more live and die by the three. They, they desperately yeah. needed it. Isaac and I were, were constantly talking about they've got to get to 45 threes attempted. Like it, that was the math problem for the Mavericks. The math problem for the Mavericks is different now. We haven't really figured out exactly what that is yet, but there are games where we go. They just didn't take enough threes because you've got to just math the math on there. that You've <laughs> got to take enough to match the other team. Uh, Bullock took seven a game, 40%. Dorian, six a game, 42%. D- uh, Dinwiddie, five a game, 42%. Maxi four a game, 43%. Like, that that was the playoffs. And that's why the that's Mavericks... Crazy. Mo- like, that's honestly why the Mavericks moved on is because those guys yeah. got real hot. And now, Luca was creating all these wide-open shots for them. But mm-hmm. to go from Bullock, Dorian... Uh, Spencer with the Mavericks. Spencer without the Mavericks is so different as a three-point <laughs> yeah, shooter than yeah. Spencer with the Mavericks for some reason. And Maxi to this year's Maxi, PJ, Derek Jones Jr., and Exum. It's just a very different group of four that desperately yeah. need to hit shots. Yeah, wow, those numbers are shocking. All those guys over 40. Yeah. Well, hey, Maxi, Maxi just might have that dog in him. <laughs> like, he's been ramping it up and must win games for the Mavs for like a month and a half now. He's been, he just saving, might be him. he's been saving his three point makes. He's just been saving them all for now. Well, it's funny because when he's when he's off, it's like Maxie's going to shoot the ball. And you're like, oh god, like rebound. <laughs> his shot, his shot is so flat. So when it doesn't, it doesn't go in or anywhere close. It's like, oh, it looks so gross. If you put a little yeah. more arc on it, it would, it would not miss as badly. But it just, just. Whew. I'm trying to see what he's been shooting. Uh, okay, so maybe I was wrong. In March, he shot 24 percent from. No, three. no, he did but, not shoot. He has not shot the ball well at all. Fifty percent from three in six games in April, and and PJ really ramped up from three too. Yeah, XM yeah, has PJ's. been solid from three. Derek Jones Jr. has been hitting some here and there. Like it can happen, but they don't. They also don't need it to happen. They don't need these guys to hit forty percent like these guys in twenty twenty two did. But that's the yeah. reason why they went to the Western Conference Finals is because these four guys were so hot. It's good. Well, look, PJ's last eight games, thirty nine percent from three. Yeah, hold on now. He shot hold well. I don't, I don't want it to get too comfortable. It's like, well, we haven't been shooting well from three and winning games. Like, yeah, I think you're going to have to shoot well from three here. At, at you, least league average. You need everything you can get. Yeah, you do. I'm not, is it crazy? I'm not worried at all about Exum. He's been awesome. And he's hit really tough shots. And the Mavericks would literally have four less wins if he didn't exist. So <laughs> what, what's the team name he played for in, uh, oh, uh... In, in Greece, right? No, he played in, in EuroLeague. Was it not in uh, Greece? The, whatever that name, the name of that team is. Like the big one. A- either way, whatever they show. Uh, Fenerbahce? What? I, I'm not even Olympiacos? Well, yeah, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that what, who he played for? But e- either way, whenever they show clips of their stadiums, it's like this is what Dante Exum had to deal he with. Played like, oh. He played for Partisan. He played for Partisan. Oh, Partisan. Partisan. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, anytime they show clips for their stadiums where they're like shooting flares, I'm like, oh, he's gonna be fine. <laughs> this Clippers crowd that's just like a bunch of actors who show up, like, wait, I thought this was a Lakers game. His game is really like his game should be good for this series. Like, they Exum yeah. should get a lot of time. And if he hits threes, I, man, it's great for the maps. I'm gonna tell you right now, I think Exum is in, in the closing lineup. Absolutely, I'm with you. And I think it's gonna be Maxi too. I think that's how they close games. Yeah, we'll see. Maxi, PJ, Exum, Kyrie, and Luca. We'll see it for sure. There you go. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully with Law Murray, to talk about the Mavs and Clippers some more. And then, man, Sunday, first game. Great stuff. I should be in L.A. to cover it all. And so follow me there uh, at Nick Van Exen on all socials. And then keep subscribing to this channel. Go go <sighs> subscribe to Slightly Biased channel as well on YouTube, breaking out all kinds of Mavs stuff. It's just Slightly Biased on YouTube. Why do you keep saying should be? Should be? Yeah. Yeah, you're always like, yeah, it should be in LA. Like, it's just like I don't up like. The to, air. I don't, it's not like a guarantee until I'm like in the building there. I don't know. That's this, okay. that's how I work with stuff like this. No, it's like I operate the same way. You know, it's like I don't like. Oh, I'll, I'll absolutely 100 percent be there, and then something wild happens. I don't know. My leg gets cut <laughs> yeah. off, and then I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'm I'm home, guys. Sorry. Maybe we toned down the wildness. Like, oh, my <laughs> flight got delayed, and I just couldn't make it. You just go straight to. I lost I my taking, leg in a car. I am accident. taking a Boeing, so. <laughs> Those oh yeah that's right they had that whole scandal you could have a lawsuit in your future and just retire do you or someone you know were they on there what did they make a promise on a podcast and then we're on their way to a, to a thing and would you run the risk of, be, of being in a, a plane crash if you had a ninety nine percent chance of survival but there was a ten million dollar lawsuit at the end of it 
Is the 1% mean I'm on Lost? Like, is, is that what happens to me? Who knows what happens when you die? That's no one. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Maps. Peace out. Boom. <laughs> I actually hope nobody's watching Lost. We can... <laughs> That's been so, out for like 15 years, though. Spoiler alert. <laughs>